Today we're going to look at a different type of car. Now I've made a lot of videos on cars such as this. Uh, we're talking fiberglass kit cars. So this really isn't going to apply to the kit car itself, but more the fiberglass finish of the vehicle. Um, so we can be talking boats, we can be talking kit cars, we can be talking fiberglass custom made interior parts, we can be talking a lot of stuff here. But it's basically anything that has to do with fiberglass. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. Now, when we're working on a metal car, just like my little Volkswagen that you see right here, bodywork is really easy to do. All right, you fix the dent, you go down the road, and bam, 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 it's a done fucking deal. But when you're talking about a fiberglass kit car or anything that has to do with fiberglass slash gel coat, because I'm going to go over this situation with you, it's really important, I want to look at the different layers that we have right here. Let's go ahead and look at that. And you can see that this is our fiberglass down in here. If you look real close, you can see the strands of fiberglass. And then you got the fiberglass resin that's mixed in with the strands of fiberglass. But on top of it, look right here, and you can see this is white. This is called gel coat. Now the gel coat is actually the finished coat. And when they pour these cars into a mold, what happens is they spray the gel coat in first, and then they start applying the fiberglass resin and the fiberglass mat. So when they pop it out of the mold, of course the whole car is going to be this white gel coat or whatever color they put on there. Now, depending on the company or manufacturer that made that fiberglass piece is going to depend on how good of quality the gel coat is because that's really what matters on a situation like this is the gel coat itself. Um, if the gel coat wasn't put on in a thick uh, substance, you might say, where it's a sandable situation, you're going to have problems on that car from start to finish. You're going to block sand through that uh, gel coat. You're going to go straight down into the fiberglass uh, uh, resin and mat. And then from there, it's just a real hellacious nightmare. So when you're working on something that's fiberglass, you want to be really, really careful block sanding it. And you definitely want to try to do everything by hand. Um, using power tools on a fiberglass kit car or a boat or what have you is basically uh, a dangerous situation if you don't know how to use that power tool properly. Now you can see that this car here has already been primed. This car was hand sanded with 80 grit, then hand sanded down to 180 grit, and we're talking dry sandpaper, and then two full wet coats of primer were applied. Now the primer that was used on this was a 2K urethane primer, which is a non-shrinkable primer, and it requires a hardener. So when this primer was put on, we let it sit for approximately a month, month and a half, so everything would shrink down, it would be dry 100%, so we could come back and do our first block sanding on it. So what you're looking at here is the first block sanding of the vehicle before we put the final prime job on it. And you can see how it's been feathered out very good. And when I say feathered out, look right here, and you can see that's just feathered out really nice, really good job, and it filled in the scratches perfectly. So that's one angle of working with fiberglass is to block sand it out properly for primer. Using air tools once again is going to give you a very uh, wavy and uneven surface. It's very important that all the fiberglass work you do is mostly by hand. Very strenuous, very tedious job. So once we got past our first prime job and started blocking it for our final prime job for our paint job, 
what we have come into, and this is something here, this is the story right here, this is the initial reason I am posting this video, is for you, the viewer that is working with fiberglass, understands the situation. If you remember correctly, when we first started this video, we were talking about doing bodywork on metal versus fiberglass. Doing bodywork and block sanding metal is very easy and simple compared to what we're talking about in the paint booth. And I'm going to explain why. Now I'm going to go around this car as I'm talking because this is what we're looking at here. I want you to look right here. That is called Evercoat. That's a polyester filler, very fine filler. And what Minnie the Body Shop Girl has done, here's another one right here, and we can go around all these openings. She has filled in microscopic, small pinholes and imperfections. And if we write up the roof rail here, we can see that right here, here's another spot. Now what this was, this was another situation. You can see it right there where my fingernail is is that that is an imperfection in the fiberglass. That is a pinhole. And the reason the pinholes are caused is because when they shoot the gel coat in, it gets smooth, but when they start putting the fiberglass resin in, it gets air pockets between the gel coat and the fiberglass. And what happens is you start creating air bubbles. So when you start sanding your gel coat, it sands down so far, that you get the air bubbles start to pop on you and they become air pockets. If we look right here, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on that and you can see by that small dot that I just zoomed in on, that is a small air pocket. Now, you're looking at it and it's getting blurry as I zoom in because it's so small that when we look back here, we can't see it. But the problem that we have is when we go to paint this car, that's gonna stick out like a sore thumb. It looks small now, but when it's painted, it will look like fucking shit in a toilet that's ready to be flushed down. So what is the difference between working on a metal car and a fiberglass car? The difference is, is gel coat. The difference is fiberglass itself, and the difference is air pockets that have been created in the fiberglass as the vehicle or whatever you're working on was made, and then pinholes were created. It's a very, very hard situation. It's a meticulous and a very, what can I say, brain teaser. Here's another one right here. Um, I'm going to point at it because if I get real close to it, it'll blur out. So we're going to go to zoom in on that. And you can see that that was a small imperfection as well. And many of the body shop girl found that and fixed it. So when you're talking bodywork on fiberglass kit cars, that's basically the bodywork we're talking about, unless you actually come across something that has been wrecked. Because when you wreck a fiberglass item, it doesn't dent. It rips it off, it breaks it off, and then you got to reconstruct what was broke, which is another day and another story, and hopefully the owner of this car will never get in a wreck, because if he does, he's pretty much screwed. The company that built these cars is out of business, and no parts can be found. So if you're working on a fiberglass kit car or something that is fiberglass, always keep in mind that the gel coat is the finished coat of the product that you're working on, and it's very important to be very cautious when block sanding that. Once you break through the gel coat, you really start getting problems because there's no sealant on the fiberglass itself, and the problem that you have is the pores in the fiberglass, the pores that are in that real rough fiberglass will soak in, just like a piece of wood. And then, many years down the road, or possibly even sooner than that, what's gonna happen, even when you use 2K epoxy primer, it's eventually going to shrink down and it's going to show spots where you burn through the gel coat and where you fucked up by using, yes, power tools to go ahead and sand with. So we've covered a lot of shit on the fiberglass car and also fiberglass whatever you're working on. I want to show you one more item and this is a center console that I custom made for uh, a 66 Chevelle and we didn't put any gel coat on that but we did use a lot of Dynaglass. Now what Dynaglass is is a filler compound such as Bondo but it has fiberglass uh, uh, what can we say particles inside it.
So if we look right here, this is a custom-made center console that we made for our 1966 Chevelle. I want to go ahead and take a look at that because this does not have any gel coat on it, but it will give a good example that if you bust through the gel coat on the item that you're working on, this is what can happen. And if you look real close here, you can see all these little imperfections and all these pinholes all across this thing. This is what it's going to look like if you bust through that gel coat. You're going to have very, very bad imperfections all the way across. And I've actually, here's a spot right here, I've actually busted through the gel coat and found holes this big. And what I'm saying is an air pocket where they didn't get it out when they were laying the fiberglass mat. And then the gel coat, of course, is such a thin layer that when you sand through it, it's like paper and you can push it through with your finger. So always be prepared when you're working with fiberglass items, always be cautious and always be aware that fiberglass is not like metal at all. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, giving you tech tips, helpful hints, and secret tricks about fiberglass and working with it and hopefully doing a good job so you can tell everybody I did that by my fucking self. We'll see you later. Watching DIY Automotive School. Classes don't stop till you know everything.